Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Shed Aquarium. My name is Morris. I'm one of the senior trainers here, and I'm going to be leading your tour today. We have with us today our partners, Google and Give It Forward. Thank you. Um, I'm Ariana with GiveForward.com. For anyone watching who doesn't know what we do, we help families create personal fundraising pages so they can cover the cost of medical bills and out-of-pocket expenses. If you're wondering who all the people are that you can see below you who get to participate in today's virtual tour, those are families that are actually fundraising right now on Give Forward. If you want to learn more about those families, you can go to the Shed's Facebook page or to the Give Forward Facebook page. So I'm going to let you take it away. And at the end of the pres each presentation of animals, if there are questions from those that are participating in the tour, you can ask me and I will tell them to her. Okay, you guys, you ready to get started? Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This first stop that we have here, we're in front of our sea otter habitat. We have five sea otters in our collection. Looks like today there's three of them out here. We have one male. He is 13 years old. His name is Yaku, and he's the biggest one in the group. He weighs about 75 pounds. He's a big guy. Our littlest one is a California sea otter, and her name is Kayukos. She's very small and she's very dark colored, so if you see them swimming around, you'll be able to tell those two apart really easily. Also in this habitat is one of our young females, Kiana. Kiana is eight years old, and she was orphaned as a very young pup. They, she was found on the beach when she was about three days old, and we were able to bring her here and hand raise her. Baby otters, just like baby humans, need to be fed every couple of hours. So we have people here 24 hours a day taking care of them and feeding them every two hours when they need it. Uh, Alaskan sea otters and California sea otters eat about 25% of their body weight every single day. So they get fed all restaurant quality seafood, the top quality stuff. We have shrimp that is grown especially for these guys. They get clams and crabs and mussels squid and all different kinds of fish to eat. So do you guys have any questions for me? How big can they get as like the male adult? What's the biggest sort of you would expect them to be so weight wise? How can they get as adults? Our male Yaku weighs about 75 pounds and when he stands up he's about four and a half feet tall so he's a big guy. Yeah. That's cool, thank you. Anybody else have questions? Another fun fact about the sea otters is that their fur is so dense that in one little tiny square inch on a sea otter, there's as many hairs as there is on a full-grown German Shepherd dog. So here's one of the guys right now. This is Cayucos in the corner, the really dark one, so you can see her. And then the other one that was just down here, that's Kiana, and she's a little bit silver in the head. What we found is when they're, see how, see how nice and silver she is? It's like she has blonde hair instead of dark hair. So cute. They also have some fish in here. The big ones are half moons, and then there's some little teeny tiny ones. This one's hiding right down here, and that's a kelp perch. So they don't ever try to eat the fish that they're in with. Do they try to eat the fish? You know what? They've been really good. We, we've been um, making sure that they get lots and lots of food so they don't want to eat fish. But what we found is that if one of the fish start not swimming very well, then they think it's a fun toy that they can play with, and they will go and hug it and wrestle with it and play with it a little bit, So, which, of course, the fish don't like. So as soon as we see anything like that, we pull the fish out of the exhibit. And there's Yaku, our male. You can see how big he is. He's a big guy. Now these guys will dive for 10-15 minutes at a time and they'll forage all the food off the bottom. Like I said, they eat clams and things that they find down in the bottom hidden underneath the kelp. And they actually have a flap of skin under their left arm. It acts like a purse for them. So what they'll do is they'll find all the food and they'll stick it in that pocket until they have enough food and then they'll come up to the surface and they'll roll on their back and then they'll put the food on their back, on their stomach and eat their food from the stomach to the mouth. 
just pull it out of their pocket. Okay, all right, looks like we're going to be moving on to our next habitat. And our next place we're going to go, we're going to go visit our Pacific white-sided dolphins. You guys ready to go? Okay, let's go. Hey. You want we're going to go see the dolphins. Here they are. Here are the dolphins, David. Hello. It's really sunny over here today. Okay, so in this habitat, we have our Pacific white-sided dolphins. Dolphins. Yeah. So these guys range in age from one year old oh, to 28 years old. Can you see them? Oh. They're playing right now. That one right there with a the big white spot on her side, that's TK. She's our oldest dolphin. She's 28 years old. Also in here is our little baby, Sabu. He's not even a year old yet. I want to say he's like 10 months old. They're, they're hiding at the other side, but you'll see them swim in. These guys range, well, Sagu weighs about 130 pounds, but he's only a year old. But the biggest dolphin in here weighs about 275 pounds. She's a big girl. Yeah, it's big. Yeah, it's a big yeah. girl. They weigh, um, they eat about 25 pounds of food every day, and we feed them a variety of different types of fish. So they get herring and caitlin and squid. Sometimes they get little smelts or mackerels or anchovies. Do any of you eat anchovies on your pizzas? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So anchovies and sardines and all kinds of good stuff. There's the mom. Yes, her name is Pequette. And the baby, even though he's eating fish, he's still nursing on his mom. So he eats about 10 pounds of fish every day. And on top of that, he gets milk from his mom. You guys have any questions about the dolphins? How big can they get up to weight, did you say? The big males of this species can get to be about 300 pounds. Oh but the goodness. females are usually a little bit smaller. And all these dolphins right now are females except for the baby. And he's a, he's a, just a little boy. He's, so he's not full grown yet. He's only about 130 pounds. OK. What's their life expectancy? There he is. There's the baby right now. So they grow up pretty fast. He's so he's not even a year old yet, and he's almost as big as some of the females are. But he won't stop nursing until he's about two years old. So he'll keep nursing as long as his mom lets him. You said the really fast swimmers. You can see him jumping up behind us. They swim about 25 miles an hour, and they can jump about 20 to 30 feet in the air. Out in the wild, you'll see these animals, about a 1,000 of them all together in huge groups, and they call them a gam of dolphins. You said you have a, a nice little morning rest right now. Did somebody else have a question? Sorry, no, I was just wondering, you said you have a 28-year-old female. Is that like an average age? How old can they live to be? How old do they live to be? And though wild, their average age is 12 to 15 years old, but in zoos and aquariums, they can live to be in their late 20s or early 30s. Oh, so the 28-year-old's like a grandma. I'm sorry, she says you want to make a grandma. Good girl. <laughs> There we go. That's Catrell. She's our big girl. You can tell her apart because she has a very large dorsal fin. That fin on their back is called a dorsal fin, and hers is the biggest one of all. What do you guys think? Are you ready to move on to the belugas, or do you have any more questions? Ooh, do you want to see a whale? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys want to go see the belugas? Yeah. Right. On to the next one. Hey, look, you guys, that's our baby beluga. She's only eight months old. Swimming with her mom. They'll swim back around in just a minute here. We can go down a little bit farther and maybe see them in some of the other windows. Oh! 
Yes, it is. She's a weirdo bear. Yeah, she weighs about 16 pounds. I don't mean that. 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 I don't mean yeah, there's no way this one might give us a little better picture of the whole habitat. So you can see how big this pool is. This pool holds two million gallons of water. And it's kind of hard to see back in the corner here. Fish tank. Here comes the baby. The baby is swimming towards us with his mouth. See how little he is and how dark he is? I say he, but it's actually a she. Oh, no. So they're born in the water, very clear. And so that dark color helps them blend in. And then when they get older, they turn white because they live up where there's lots of ice and snow. Now, because the habitat is so big, they look kind of small, but they're actually pretty big. The little baby, even the littlest baby one, she weighs 300 pounds. And these guys also eat fish, so we're feeding them herring and capelin and squid. In the wild, they would eat things like clams that they would find buried in the sand. And what they do is they spit into the sand, and that blows all the sand away. And then they can suck the clams out of the shell. So sometimes you'll see them blowing bubble rings in the water and um, sucking things off the bottom of the pool, and those are natural behaviors that they would do out in the wild. <laughs> Our beluga whales that we have here, one of them just turned, like I said, the baby just turned six months old. We have another male beluga who is three, another boy who's five, and then one of our females is six. And that's, that's, believe it or not, that's our three-year-old male. His name is Nunavik. All of their names are Inuit, which is a native tribe in the Pacific Northwest. That's Kayavak. She was actually our first baby born here at the aquarium, and she's now 13 years old. So the babies. The baby has a brother swimming in the habitat. I'm not sure where he is right now. There he is, right there. That's his brother, and he's five years old, and his name is Miki. So sometimes you'll see the baby swimming with his big brother. You guys have any questions about these guys? What's the? That's not a big girl. And there's the baby and the mom again. You guys can see her. Do they live in big family groups like the dolphins? They do. They usually these guys are in smaller family groups. So a group of seven to ten or twelve individuals is what you would normally find them in. How many, are in, how many are in the tank in the shed? I forgot. Seven? Seven? Seven of them, right? Yes, there's seven. I, I always forget with the baby if it means seven or eight, but no, nope, there's seven. Oh. And the baby is still nursing. She's not eating any fish yet. She's only nursing from her mom. And when you watch them swim, She'll drop back down below, and you can see on her belly how she's swimming close to her belly right now. That's actually one of the areas where the cat nurse is from. One of their nicknames of these species are called canaries of the sea. They sing beautiful, beautiful songs. And like parrots, they can mimic almost any sound that they hear. So if they hear something like a foghorn or a funny noise, sometimes they'll make that noise that they hear. One of the whales was playing around with me the other day and all of a sudden she went <laughs> she made a really funny noise. She had obviously heard that and thought it was fun. She wanted to make me laugh. So it seems pretty quiet down here now but 
when you're underwater, they all they make all different kinds of clicks and whistles and all different kinds of sounds. Naya, Naya is very interested in what you guys are doing. She keeps coming over and looking at you. Okay. So, everybody know that whales are actually a type of mammals like we are? So they breathe air just like we do. So you see them swimming underwater, but every now and then you see them come to the surface to take a breath. Hold a breath for 20 minutes at a time if they really want to. They usually don't, but sometimes they can. It's you, so. Oh, sure. Um, I've just been asked to talk about the fact that we do do training sessions with all of our animals, and it's a good way to keep them stimulated mentally, and also a great way for them to get some exercise. But how they know which trainer to work with, each dolphin, whale, and otter has their own shape. It's like a name tag, and that's how they know which trainer they're going to be working with. So we have the whale Naya that keeps coming down here. Her shape is a big circle. It's a bright red circle. And what we do is we'll put that up against the window or, or with the trainer. <laughs> and she'll come down and she'll, that's how she knows that she's going to be oh, working smart. with smart. It's like they have therapy too. They do. Mm -hmm. They get physical exercise and mental stimulation and all kinds of fun stuff. Wow. There's Kaiba, the big girl. They go to school like, See? So. They go to school like you. Yeah. Okay, you guys have any more questions about the whales? All right, let's move on down to the penguins. <gasps> penguins! Bye. 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 bye, whale. Say bye. Bye. Hi, whale. Bye. 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 B
they go to school just like everybody else does. So if you notice, all of the rockhopper penguins are coming up here to feed with Mike. And where do you think the Magellanic penguins are going? See them all walking away? They're all, they're all going back behind the scenes. There's another feeding station in back, so there's more trainers in back that are working with them on different types of behaviors and um, teaching them to cooperate with us. One of the most important reasons we train them is to cooperate with us in their medical care. So we train them to allow us to pick them up and look at their wings and look at their feet and make sure that they're very, very healthy. As they swim by, you guys might notice that they have little bracelets on their wings. Those are how we identify the penguins because if you look at them, they all look kind of pretty much alike, right? So when the trainers come out, we need to know who's been eating and who's been doing what. So we look at those armbands and so their little bracelet, each one of the colors on their bracelet means a different number. So these guys don't have names, they actually have numbers. So let's see, I can't see any close up, but there's, for instance, blue. If you see blue on a bracelet, that means that it's a number five. And if you see white on a bracelet, that means it's a number three. So if, for instance, if you saw a penguin up here that has blue and white on the bracelet, that means that that is penguin number 53, and that's her name. So her name is actually a number. Oh, you just saw somebody jumping out of the water. These guys can swim pretty fast. They can swim, swim about 15 miles an hour. They can't fly like most birds can, but they can swim really far and hold their breath for long periods of time. So Mike is feeding these guys different types of fish. Right now they're getting herring and capelin. And then they also get vitamins every day to help with them make sure that they're nice and healthy. So each penguin gets his very own special vitamins, and we hide the vitamins inside the gill slits of the fish that they eat so that they don't learn to swallow strange things. So they don't even know they're getting their medicine when they're getting it. And these, these guys spend a lot of time in the water, so they get really wet, but underneath their feathers, they stay completely dry because their feathers actually act like a rain jacket. So they create a nice little weave and keeps them all nice and dry underneath even though they're actually under the water. It's like the best scuba suit ever. You guys have any questions about the penguins? I had a question but I forgot. Um, Go. Yes, no? I did, can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. These guys are actually a lot heavier than they look. The, the Magellanic penguins can weigh about 10 pounds, even though they're not that big. And that's because they swim. So instead of having very light bones like, the, like most flying birds do, they have very dense bones. So if a penguin happens to hit you with their flipper, it doesn't feel like a pat on the back. It actually kind of feels like they're, they're tapping you with a little stick. So they... But you'll see them waving their flippers a lot in the air, and that's a way for them to cool off because what they do is they run the, um, they run the blood out to their flippers, and that way they can cool off. See the one on the top? He's just kind of shivering. He's not actually cold. He's actually trying to get rid of some of that heat. So he shakes his flippers and gets the blood flowing out there, and that's, that's his built-in air conditioning. You guys can see the penguins walking around. They're very good at walking around, but if they were to have to go a long distance, what they do, if it's nice and wet or easy going, is they'll lay on their belly on the snow and then they'll push with their flippers. It's called sledding, so it's just like when you're outside sledding. They lay on their belly and scoot along, and that way they don't have to walk as far. It's almost like swimming on land. But notice how they're swimming in the water. They actually, it looks like they're flying underwater, and that's pretty much what they do. They beat their wings like a flying bird would fly, but they're underwater and they swim. I remembered my question. 
how long um, can they stay underwater? And do they dive really deep, or do they just dive like short distance? They, well, they can do either or, but you know, in the wild, obviously, if they're living out where there's ice flows and things like that, they need to be able to hold their breath for a long period of time. And I want to say they can hold their breath for 10 minutes at a time. I forget wow. the actual statistics, but it's a long time if they need to. So much longer than we can, I know that much. <laughs> How much do they eat, like, in a day? You know, it varies. Right now, with breeding season, what they'll do is they'll eat a lot of food, and they'll get nice and fat so that when they lay their eggs, they don't have to go eat as much. Um, but they eat... Um, on average, I would say probably about two pounds of fish, one or two pounds of fish a day, depending on how big the bird is. Okay. The rock hoppers are a little smaller, so they usually eat about a pound of fish a day. But when they're breeding, or when they're um, before they, once a year they go through a molt where they lose all of their feathers and they can't go in the water while they're molting. And so before they molt, they can sometimes eat two or three times their normal diet just so that they have enough bulk built up for those two weeks when they have to stay out on land. Do they breed every year or? It varies. Um, right now our Magellanic population is pretty young so we have a couple of birds that do breed every year. Okay. The older birds, but most of our <laughs> birds the Magellanics are only two to three years old so they're still juveniles. They could, we have had some eggs laid, but um, okay. it's not been successful. The rock hoppers are older, and some years they breed, and some, years, some years they don't, so it kind of depends. Most of the time they stay with their own, with the regular partner, but every now and then the partners will switch up, and um, so they don't necessarily, the rock hoppers don't mate for life, but the Magellanics do. Okay. So the, when they lay eggs, you would think a, you know, a big bird like a penguin would have a big egg, but it actually is about the same size as a chicken egg, so it's not, so it's not that much bigger. So when, when we're feeding the penguins, they have to, they have rules at the dinner table, just like we have rules, so everybody has to wait their turn and be nice. Sometimes when they get really hungry, they try and elbow their buddies out of the way so that they get priority on the food, but we, we just make sure that they're, everybody's polite at the table and wait their turn. Are they the same kind of penguins in March of the Penguins? No, actually these are different, well actually the rock hoppers are very similar to the ones, one of the the March of the Penguins, but March of the Penguins was down in Antarctica, which is very cold. It's too cold for the Magellanics. Um, but there were, I think, some, there might have been some rock hoppers, or their close cousins are called the macaroni penguins. They look very similar, so I think there were a few of those guys down there. But that's pretty cold for even the rock hopper penguins. Does anybody have any last questions about any of the animals we've seen today? Nope. Well, no. it was really fun hanging out with you guys. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Yeah. Okay. All right? Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to turn it back over. You guys have a good day, all right? Bye. 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 <laughs> Is there anything that you guys want to see one more time? You want to see anything one more time? Yes. What do you want to see? The dolphins, maybe, or the whales? All right. Yeah, I think we can go that direction. Yep, we can definitely go back that way.
There's mom and baby. We're swimming along with mom and baby. Look at them. Look at them. Oh, look at the baby. There's yeah. a baby. Aww. Do they have sharks here too? We do have some sharks, but they're in a different part of the aquarium. Oh, so that's probably smart not to keep them all together. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, you guys. I want to thank everybody for coming to the shed today. It was really fun having you all visit. You guys have a great day, okay? Thanks. Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. bye.